Hey guys, I wanna start right off by saying thank you for all the feedback and interest we got in the running video. It was so encouraging, and I'm gonna take a second at the end of this video to reply to a lot of the questions and feedback that we got. Uh, but first things first, this video is gonna be a little different this week. Basically, we felt like we had so much great footage from my first session at the Runners Academy that we wanted to make a follow-up video. So if you're interested in hearing Chris go more in detail on things like running mechanics, training, and technique, this is for you, so please enjoy. but you're a little bit asymmetrical. You kind of overstride a little bit more on your on your right side, so I'm gonna examine that a little bit as to maybe why. Okay. Okay, so, and I'll, I'll define overstride as this, right? Ideally, I want, I want you to land with a shin angle 90 degrees relative to the ground. And, and think about it this way. If you're moving forward and you throw your foot out in front of you like this and you're landing with the ankle out in front of the knee yeah. and really far out in front of your hip, what effect is that gonna have on you? You're gonna push yourself backwards, essentially. Right, you're throwing on the brakes, okay? So when you're running, you spend, you know, two tenths of a second on the ground, right? It's not a lot of time. So you don't wanna waste time in a landing in a position that isn't favorable for you, okay? So this is something that we can clean up. Biomechanically, all right, running is described as a spring mass model, all right? Our leg is a spring. We wanna use it as a spring. What are some of the, the properties of our leg that give us spring? Tendons, tendon here, tendon here, right? Your IT band attaches into your glute to give you some good spring, all right? You're landing out here on, on your heel or even out in this position, you can't use that spring very well. All right, I asked you to hop up and down on one foot and, and you did this, right? Intuitively, you played basketball, you know this, you know how to give yourself spring, right? Running fundamentally is springing from one foot to one foot, right? That's what I wanna teach you how to do, all right? Stride rate, stride length will happen with the more force, the faster you put that down into the ground, okay? So, starting here, number one, tall, okay? You wanna be tall, and what does that mean? Stack everything up. So number two, we wanna move our legs, and specifically our foot, in a way that we can apply force into the ground against gravity. So it's gonna look something like this. And what would you call this that I'm doing right now in front of you? Uh, marching. marching, beautiful. Running is kind of like marching, and it's more about how you apply force down into the ground than stride length or stride right, okay? When I say a piston, do you understand what a piston is? Can you visualize what a piston is in like an engine, right? So it goes up, down, up, down, okay? So this is the action that I wanna see with your feet, like this, so a piston action. And right now, just start small. As you do this, I wanna make sure the foot stays parallel to the ground, okay? So I don't wanna see any of this, okay? So up, up, down, right? So the difference between running slow and running fast is essentially how you're applying force. As you go faster, you're applying more force in the right direction over a shorter period of time, right? But the piston pattern stays the same. From a biomechanical standpoint, the way that he's moving, we identify that he's not really moving well through his right hip. Um, his left hamstring's really weak and we've traced a lot of it back to an old injury he's had on his right ankle playing basketball. On the table, we brought him in, we did a little bit of uh, myofascial work around his lower back, some of the muscles there, around the ligaments of his sacroiliac joint, and that, in 10 minutes, cleaned up his hip range of motion and helped with his strength around his ankle. So now that we've sort of set the stage for that, we understand what's going on, we can better prescribe the right type of exercises and movements for him uh, for this goal. So, question and answer time. Dude runs like he's sworn by killer bees. Not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! I actually really love this comment, and I do, or at least I'm gonna assume this comment is specifically directed at my circuits on weeks five and six that I showed a couple quick clips on. To give just some context as to why my form looks that 
messed up. The paradox of running is the more you are running, the stiffer your body becomes and weeks four, five, and six were really when that started to kick in for me. So my legs, when I just hit the track, didn't move the way I was used to them moving. Um, and that caused me to compromise, like literally my hamstrings are just so tight that you can see me just like arching my back straight up when I should be pushing my momentum forward. Uh, one of the ways I had to deal with this, so I literally went back to the runner's academy and I got some like acupuncture done in my calves where he put some needles in and like hit them with an electric pulse, did a bunch of other circuit work and some, some table work to try and get my muscles loose enough that I could go back and keep training. By the very end of this challenge, I literally took the last four days and didn't run. I did circuits on a bike to keep my heart rate up and that was allowed me to be a lot more physically loose for the final mile when I timed myself. How many distance runs should I do a week? Don't know if I'm the best person to answer this, but I'm gonna assume you're training for the mile or for a half mile type of, uh, type of race. And in that case, you probably wanna do one long distance run a week. Uh, and long distance is probably, depending on where you're at, north of an hour. When I was training, I was trying to do three just casual jogs, which was about 45 minutes to an hour and then two days of circuits. And if you add in that long distance run at the end, that'll fill up your week and give you six days of solid running. What were your favorite stretches and what were the most helpful exercises? Uh, for stretching, I mostly just worked off a circuit of stretches that Chris had put together and it's a video that's up on his channel. So I'll, I'll link that below so you can find it. Uh, for the exercises, there was a band exercise that I don't think made it in the original video that involved putting a small rubber band around my feet, uh, about uh, two feet, and pulling that so it was tight and work and pulling on my ankles, and then just hopping up and down sequentially for about 30 second intervals. And that was basically just meant to strengthen uh, your ankle, strengthen your feet, and build those supporting muscles around your legs. So when you're making content, you, are, you have a strong base and you're not risking injury. Uh, that was a pretty good exercise to do uh, that I should highlight. Did you take supplements or change your diet? Uh, no. I did not take any supplements, and as far as diet went, I was basically eating about the same that I was during the uh, during the shoulder axe challenge I was doing, because I tried to jump right from that into that and not get back into a bad habit of eating a lot of junk. Over the course of this challenge, in part because it was the summer, I did eat less, I think, so I probably lost some weight during this challenge. I certainly lost some muscle mass, I know that. Uh, but on the whole, I didn't try and do anything radical, and I didn't take any uh, additional supplements. Did you experience runner's knee? If so, how did you deal with it? No, I was lucky enough not to have to deal with that. I did start to feel a lot of pain in my shins from time to time, and usually just a recovery day and putting some ice on my legs helped with that. Mostly what I went through was stiffness in the calves, stiffness in the hamstrings that had to be foam rolled out, and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I twice went and got some acupuncture done from Chris, uh, some light acupuncture and a little bit of like, he put in some needles and then add like a volt of electricity into the muscles to try and wake them up because those were the parts of my body that really just took a beating and stiffened right up and wanted to lock up on me. Uh, how do you stay motivated through your challenges? Uh, this one's not about running, but happy to answer it anyway. Usually when I get going on a challenge, I am I hit the ground running, I'm excited for the first two to three weeks. And it's really that middle section, uh, when you're in the thick of it, that things get hard. By the time I'm at the end of a challenge, usually it is fear that kicks in and the knowledge that if I don't do well and if I don't show some respectable progress, the video is going to be a waste of time, it's not going to be very good, and I'll have wasted that effort. So fear is a major motivator for me, and the desire to create something that's good, that's worth sharing, that people will be interested in. So that usually kicks me in the butt down, down the stretch, but like anyone, there were, times, there were times on this challenge when I would go out with the intent of running 12 circuits, and I would call the day at 8, and then have to come back two days later to do it again. But there were days doing the running challenge where I would go to the track with the intent of running 12 circuits and call it at eight and then have to go back two days later and do it right. And it's just being able to hold yourself accountable over that period of time. And for me, certainly fear helps a lot. I hope some of that was helpful for any of you who would like to set your own running goals and I certainly encourage you to do so. Uh, and I wanna give a special thanks to those of you who support us on Patreon. Cam and I appreciate it so much and it really does help us in turning out videos. And we should have a new one up next week. Cheers.